Hello, crafters, and welcome. I'm Yana Smakula. I'm a passionate card maker, stamper, and an avid paper crafter. Many of you suggested I share a video about ways to stamp backgrounds using small or individual stamps, not background stamps. And since this subject is near and dear to my heart and something I absolutely adore, I thought I would use this topic for the second episode of my Five Ways series. This video is a part of a series I host on my channel featuring five different ways to use same type products or technique or something in card making. I'm hoping you will find this video useful. If you do, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Ring the bell too to be notified of every new upload. Last time we talked about five ways to use Nuvo Drops, and I'm glad you enjoyed my tips and techniques to work with this product. In today's video, I'm featuring five ways to stamp backgrounds for our handmade cards. I'm going to start by saying that you can take pretty much any image, stamp it several times in one way or another, and have a cool looking background and a completely different use of that stamp. My goal is to help you see your non-background stamps in a different way and to help you use them in a different way for your cards, possibly getting more bang for your buck. One of the most common ways I like to use my stamps to make backgrounds is by stamping images randomly on the backgrounds of my cards. These can be either solid images stamped in various colors of ink or outline images typically stamped in black ink and colored using some coloring medium or other. Now I say random, but there's really no such thing. There's of course some method to the randomness. Let's take a look at specific examples. This simple one-layer birthday wishes card features a random floral pattern with white card edges that appear to have been masked off. The randomness of this card started with a sentiment stamped first in the center of the panel. Next, I worked my way from the largest images to the smallest by stamping each, carefully choosing the placement within the imagined border. You can watch this process in detail in a video tutorial linked here. This next card with a colorful tropical pattern, while looks very random, in fact isn't. The flamingos were stamped forming an X on a card, and the rest of the elements followed, filling in the gaps. This card also combines both solid image stamping, leaves stamped in green ink, and outline image stamping plus colorful coloring. You can see a photo tutorial for this card on my blog, link is in the video description. If you'd like to see a simpler example, here's one where the leaf image was stamped a bunch of times without any rhyme or reason and colored in using markers. Here's another example of a purely random pattern. While these images weren't stamped directly on the background, I stamped, colored, and cut each of them out. They were arranged in a completely random way to form a quirky background for this card. I have a video available for this one linked below. This card features a random spring stamped pattern using a single image. All I did here was stamp same image repeatedly and rotated it each time I made an impression to give my pattern a lot of movement and diversity. One of the best examples of a truly random stamped pattern is this colorful tropical one. You can see it's stamped step by step on my blog, a link is below. Now here are a few other great examples of random stamped backgrounds from my blog. Some of these have photo tutorials, some have videos, but most are just card ideas. By the way, you can even use critter images to have cute random stamped backgrounds for your cards. Here's a good example. And finally, another favorite of mine is random stamping with some overlap. Now both of these card examples were stamped using just one image. It was heat embossed in pretty embossing powder color and then colored using color pencils. Even though these were created using just one image, the backgrounds still look pretty impressive. Now, if you'd like to have a little more order on your cards, you can try stamping simple linear backgrounds or patterns. Now, what this means is that your image, be it one in the same image or a grouping of different images from one stamp set or even multiple sets are stamped on a straight horizontal, vertical, or a diagonal line. This, I think, is a cool example of using letter stamps, 
stamping them on a straight line to make up a fun background. Now, I intentionally made it illegible here, as if it's done in some unknown foreign language, to make it even more interesting. Linear backgrounds also look fabulous when done using just two images, a main one stamped on the majority of the background, and then an additional image added here and there for some interest. A great example is this eggs and bacon card stamped in shades of pink. Now, my favorite linear pattern card is probably this one with a bunch of colorful fingerprint-like flamingos. They are all stamped on a straight horizontal line. The next card features parrots stamped in a line both horizontally and vertically. It's the same exact image, yet because half of the images are stamped upside down and all are colored using four different sets of colors, it looks colorful, playful, and absolutely not boring. There's a photo tutorial for this card available on my blog. Here's another example made using just one tiny image of a surfboard. This did take some time to stamp and color, but it looked fabulous in the end. Video tutorial is available for this one. Now, this is a good example of a linear stamped pattern for a Christmas card. Just stamp several kinds of geometric looking Christmas trees and you have a cool looking background. And I have video tutorial available for this one as well. Now, linear stamping doesn't exactly mean that everything has to be measured and stamped precisely. It can be a little bit off and kind of bouncy like on this card with pretty sailboats. Each sailboat is tilted slightly to emphasize the impression that the boats are sailing in the water. Another thing I like to do is to incorporate words into my stamped patterns and backgrounds. These words can make up a card sentiment, they can be a secondary message on my card, or act just as a design element without carrying any actual meaning. Here are a few examples. The handcrafted hello, while being a main sentiment on this card, is also a part of the background pattern. It is stamped in the same light gray ink and it blends perfectly with the rest of the images. A part of sentiment message on this card actually makes up a part of the background stamping. I have it there not only completing the sentiment, but also filling in the gaps in my stamped and die-cut pattern. Now this card has no sentiment other than the one stamped in the background, helping complete the stamped pattern. Here's an example of a Christmas card with a stamped pattern, including words. This one not only has pretty stamped trees, ornaments and deer, but also beautiful sentiments that work as sub-sentiments for this project. Finally, this one is a linear stamped pattern where some of the critter stamping is replaced with sentiments. Because the sentiment wasn't tall enough to fill the entire space, it was stamped three times in each row. Here's a completely different example where the stamped word makes a whole background pattern itself. The key here is, of course, to use a big enough word stamp to take plenty of real estate on your card. Now, floral backgrounds are some of the easiest and prettiest to make. They probably can be classified a, as random backgrounds, random stamped backgrounds, as I don't actually see floral images being stamped on a straight line, but I wanted to have them here as a separate category. You just start with a flower, you add leaves, and other small flowers to make a cluster, and then you repeat. And if there's any space left, you fill it in with stamped dots. It's easy and very pretty. Now this works beautifully for all those color layering floral stamps, regardless of the size, but I'm still, I'm yet to find one layering flower that doesn't make a pretty background pattern for a card. Of course, you can also use outline floral images to make beautiful, backgrounds or patterns as well. A slightly different approach to floral patterns is shown here, where one same large floral image is stamped in several shades of ink, overlapping other flowers, forming a solid pattern. This is very easy to stamp, and if you'd like to see it in action, I have a video tutorial for you. Here's a similar example that shows image overlap, but this time I used several stamps to create a soft tropical pattern and even accentuated some of the impressions with dry embossing using coordinating dyes. There's a video tutorial available for this card as well. We're almost there, guys. 
finally, there are also cards with partial or incomplete stamp patterns and backgrounds. And these, I feel, are best suited for beginners. This is typically a stamped pattern that covers just a portion of the card, cascading from the top or the bottom of your project, like you see on these examples, or it is stamping coming in from the edges of the card, leaving the center section free and available for the sentiment. Do you have any other tips and tricks for using your individual stamps to make backgrounds for cards? Share them in the comments below. And while you're at it, let me know what product or idea you would like to see featured in the next episode of these series. On the screen, there is a link to a previous episode in case you missed it. And another fun video for you. Subscribe now not to miss any new card making videos. Love you guys. I'll see you next week.